Hi guys, welcome to Daily Problems 06, and this is a calculator section. Um, so, here we go. Alright, problem one. Let f be the function given by f of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x plus k, where k is a constant. And remember that just because k is a constant doesn't mean that k is the same throughout the problem. Um, or that k is fixed at the beginning of the problem. k can change at any time, it just means that k doesn't depend on x. Okay? Part A. On what intervals is f increasing? Okay. So similar to the problem that we did uh, from daily problems 5. So here we go. In order for f to be increasing, we know that f prime has to be positive. So if f is increasing, then f prime must be positive. Okay? So I'm going to write that in the beginning so I don't forget to write it later. And here we go. So we're going to take the derivative f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 5 times 2 is 10x plus 3. And the derivative of k is 0 because k is a constant. All right. And in order for f to be increasing, f prime must be positive. So I'm going to set this equal to 0 and factor. So 3x is going to factor into 3x, uh, 3x squared, sorry, we'll factor into 3x and x. And then we have 3. I need to get all the way up to 10. So I'm going to try a 3 here and a 1 here. So 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times x is 1. 3 and, uh, sorry, 9 and 1 is 10. So that works. And we want them both negative. Right? So negative times negative is positive. Okay. Equals 0. And so this is going to give me 1 third and this is going to give me 3. All right. And so we're going to put this on a number line. 1 third and 3. And then let's see what happens. So if I plug in something like 0, I'm going to get negative and negative make positive. Plug in something like 1, well, 3 minus 1 is positive, but 1 minus 3 is negative. So we'll get negative here. And plug in something like 100. 300 minus 1 is positive. 100 minus 3 is positive. All right. So we're going to be in this region and this region. So we're going to say negative infinity to 1 third and 3 to infinity. Worst infinity symbol ever. OK? All right, so I'm going to copy our, ooh, way over there. I'm going to copy the derivative here so that we can use it later. All right. On what intervals is the graph of f concave downward? All right, so in order for a function to be concave downward, we know that our second derivative must be negative, right? So for f to be concave downward, that's an e, to be concave down, f double prime must be negative. Again, I'm going to write it here so that I don't forget to write it later. And so we take another derivative. So if f prime equals this, f double prime will be 2 times 3 is 6x minus derivative of 10x is 10. Derivative of 3 is 0. I'm going to factor out a 2. And set it equal to 0. OK. So out of this, I'm going to get, looks like 5 thirds, right? 
So pretty small number line here, 5 thirds. And let's see what we get here. So if I plug in something like 0, 0 minus 5 is negative. And plug in something like 100, 300 minus 5 is positive. Okay. So it looks like my interval here is going to be pretty simple, negative infinity to 5 thirds. For the last piece, let's copy in the derivative here. Find the value of k for which f has 11 as its relative minimum. So we may recall, to speaking of relative minimums, that we, we had a chart. It looked something like this at the beginning of the problem. So find the value of k for which f has 11 as its relative min. Well, so if we look at this, we can see that it's increasing until 1 third, it's decreasing until 3, and then increasing after that. So the relative minimum is occurring at 3, right? It's occurring at 3. But the relative minimum is 11. So remember we talked about this at the beginning of the year, that there's a difference between where the minimum occurs and what the minimum is, right? So the minimum is at 3, but it is 11. So in other words, f of 3 must be equal to 11, right? That's what they're saying here. Now, of course, we need to tell the AP exam how we knew that. Right? So we, we need to tell them that um, f has a, oops, that's an a here, has a relative min at x equals 3 because f prime goes from negative to positive, right? Once we say that, now we can say that f prime of 3 equals 11, and the AP exam will accept that. So once we know that, all we have to do is plug it in. So f of 3, so 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9, times 5 is 45, 3 times 3 is 9, plus k. Thankfully, this is a calculator section, and hopefully I did this correctly on my calculator. Uh, I got negative 9 for all this stuff, plus k, and this must all equal 11. Be very careful. One thing you definitely do not want to do on the AP exam is then say plus 9, plus 9, because that is a misuse of the equal sign, unless you also say plus 9 here and plus 9 here. right? Um, but if you only do that in half your problem, whoopsie, no, don't clear annotation. Um, but if you only put that in half the problem, that's not true, right? Because it, it's, it, it's unbalanced. So don't do this. Um, just rewrite it, minus 9 plus k equals 11, plus 9 plus 9, um, k equals 20. Or just don't write the balancing stuff and just write k equals 20 and figure this part out in your head. Okay? So k equals 20. And that's it. All right. Question number two, a particle moves on the x-axis so that its position at any time t is greater than or equal to zero has been given by x of t equals 2t e to the negative t. Find the acceleration of the particle at t equals zero. So to find acceleration, we have to first find velocity. Make sure, I know it takes an extra second, but when you write velocity, we know that velocity equals the derivative of position. Just take a second to write that. This way, if you 
mess it up and um, you take the derivative incorrectly, you've given yourself just a little kind of um, an extra kind of bonus point. Um, if you take the derivative wrong, but you haven't actually told them that it's the derivative of position, they can't give you any partial credit. Um, so give yourself that, that little bonus point right there, just in case. So now we take the derivative, and this is going to be product rule. So here's our first part of the product rule. Here's our second part of the product rule. So first, uh, derivative of the first, or first times derivative of the second, whichever one you want to do first. So I'm going to do derivative of the first is 2 times the second plus the first, 2t, times derivative of the second. Derivative of e to the negative t is going to be e to the negative t times derivative of the inside is negative 1. And so we're just going to get kind of a, I'm just going to put a negative sign out front. Um, or we can just make that a negative. Okay. All right. And then to find acceleration, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Let me take a second to write that. And then now we have, again, another product rule. Uh, and this piece here. So here, this is not product rule because that's just a 2. And then derivative of e to the negative t, again, is negative e to the negative t minus, and then if you notice, this 2t e to the negative t is what we started with. So you could just say parentheses, and then if you're very confident of your answer, just rewrite what we have here. 2e to the negative t minus 2t e to the negative t. Because you're just going to retake the derivative that you had before. Because um, it's the exact same thing as what you had up here. And so you're just going to retake the derivative, and so you can just rewrite this guy right here and save yourself some time. Or, if you don't want to do that, just take the derivative. So you're going to have um, to put your minus right there, and then derivative of the first is 2, e to the negative t is the second, times the first um, is going to be 2t, derivative of the second becomes negative e to the negative t. Because the derivative of the inside becomes the negative here. Okay? And then we're going to have 2e to the negative t with the minus sign here, and the negative 2e to the negative t. I'm going to combine those and make that negative 4e to the negative t. And then minus minus becomes plus 2te to the negative t. So find the acceleration of the particle at t equals 0. That's going to give me, remember, don't just write it here. Sorry about that. Um, don't just write it here as negative 4 e to the 0 because a of 0 is different than a of t, right? So don't, don't do that. That's bad. Um, so write it separately. The acceleration at 0 is negative 4 e to the 0 plus and then I could start writing this, but 2 times 0, e to the 0, well, 2 times 0 is 0, times e to the 0 is 0, so this all goes away. e to the 0, anything to the 0, really, is 1, so I'm going to get negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And they haven't given us units in this problem, so we're done. Okay? All right, so... I have a funny feeling we're going to need our derivatives here, so I'm going to copy those right here. Okay. All right. Find the velocity of the particle when its acceleration is zero. Okay. So it sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. So find the velocity when acceleration is zero. So I'm going to take the second part first. When acceleration is zero. So when a equals zero, find velocity. v equals what? All right, we can do that. So I'm going to take this guy and set it equal to zero. 
Okay, when in doubt, factor. So, I'm going to factor out a 2 and an e to the negative t and see what's left over. So, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. e to the t and e to the t cancel. And then plus 2 divided by 2 goes away. t is left over. e to the negative t, e to the negative t cancel. Equals 0. Well, 2 equals 0 gives me nothing. e to the negative t equals 0 also gives me nothing because e to the negative t will never equal 0. So the only thing that gives me anything useful is right here. t equals 2. Cool. So when a equals 0, t equals 2. Awesome. All right. So when t equals 2, v equals, who knows? Let's find out. So v of 2, so going back to the first part, 2e to the negative 2 minus 2 times 2e to the negative 2. So that gives me 2e to the negative 2 minus 4e to the negative 2. Well, I could keep going. I mean, this is negative 2e to the negative 2. And I could plug this into my calculator, but why? The AP exam will have accepted it even way back here. Right? So just stop. You're done. All right. So that's part B. Part C. I think I can fit it on the same page. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 5. All right. Total distance, remember, is once you know the velocity, right, I can take the integral from 0 to 5 of the absolute value of the velocity. So 2e to the negative t minus 2t e to the negative t dt. Okay. And we could also do this, if we knew the turning points, all of the turning points, then we could do this using the original function. The problem is I don't know all of the turning points, so it'll be easier to do this using an integral. Okay? So... Um, we can plug this. I'm going to leave this actually to you guys to do. Um, at this point, I think hopefully we have enough videos of how to plug this into your calculator that you guys know how to do this. Um, when I plugged this into my ca uh, calculator, I got 1.919. Okay? So there you go. So... Ooh, wait, I did not, hang on one sec, I plugged, I plugged in the acceleration instead of the velocity. So, I did not get this, I lied, so let's plug this into our calculators. Uh, thankfully, I have our graphing calculator, fun uh, my graphing calculator open, so <laughs> let's try that again. Um, I did not mean to lie. Um, so, let's plug this in. So we'll have, uh, not here. Uh, so let's go math 9. And then we're going to go absolute value, which is math numbers, absolute value. And then we're going to go 2e. To the negative t, be careful not to use the minus sign, otherwise you'll get an error. Uh, I've done this about 17,000 times in my life, so just giving you a warning. Now we want to use the minus sign. And then 2t e to the negative t. And we're using x's instead of t's because um, it doesn't necessarily matter. And then, so we want to be careful. There's a lot of parentheses here. So parentheses around the negative x, and then close the parentheses. Another parentheses around the negative x. We'll close that parentheses. Then another parentheses. 
to close the absolute value and then comma x comma and then we're going from oops gotta move this guy going from let's move it here uh, going from zero to five and then close the parenthesis for the FNINT and it's gonna think about that for a very long time apparently uh, 1.404 so I apologize um, it really helps if you put in the correct function when you do this um, it's, I guess a good thing that I checked that uh, 1.404 um, okay so 1.404 all right all right so that's part C number three okay so this is a typo in your packets um, and therefore a typo on my screen because I take these in the packets. This should not be Q and this should not be R. This should be R and this should be Q. Okay, so um, before we even start, there's your, your typo of the day. Um, we're doing pretty well with the typos, but um, I missed this one when I, when I did the problem. So, um, so before we start, there's your, there's your big typo. Okay, um, so here we go. In the figure below, PQ represents a 40-foot ladder. So you can see what I mean. So P, the, the ladder should not be here. The ladder should be here. PQ is a 40-foot ladder with end P against the vertical wall and end Q on level ground. If the ladder is slipping down the walls, the ladder is slipping down the wall, what is the distance RQ? So we want to know what this is. So I'm going to call the thing we want to know, I'm going to call it X. And I'm going to write out here x equals question mark, because that's what we want to know. So what is the distance rq at the instant when q is moving along the ground? So q is moving along the ground three quarters as fast. So in other words, dx dt, right, the rate that it's moving, is three quarters as fast as P is moving down the wall. So I'm going to call this height and I'm going to say that dH dt so three quarters times dH dt is equal to dx dt because this is not moving as fast it's three quarters the rate of dH dt. But then I need to add one more thing. See x is getting bigger while h is getting smaller. So I'm going to add in a negative sign to represent that. Okay? Because this one should be positive and that one should be negative. So I'm going to add in a negative sign there. Okay? All right. So now let's try this. Okay. So we're going to put some things together. And it feels like we have almost no information, but we actually have more than we think. This is a triangle, and in fact a right triangle. We hope that the vertical and the horizontal are at right angles to each other. And because it's a right triangle, I know that x squared plus h squared is equal to 40. Right? And these are rates with respect to time, so I'm going to take a derivative with respect to time. So I'm going to have 2x dx dt plus 2h dh dt is equal to f 0. Oh, sorry, this should be 40 squared. Um, I missed that part. Sorry. Uh, and we're going to get 0 here. Okay? All right. Uh, either way, it will still be 0 when it's 40 squared. But, okay. So now, I'm going to try and relate all of this stuff together. Okay? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the other side of the equation. And so I'm going to say that uh, 2x dx dt equals negative 2h dh dt. And then I'm going to divide through by 2 because I can. Uh, and so these will go away. Okay. All right. Now I know 
that this is true, right? So I'm going to plug that in now, right? So I'm going to say that x times negative 3 fourths dh dt equals negative h dh dt. Uh, I don't know why that parenthesis ended up there. Okay. And so then I'm going to divide by dh dt. I can divide by anything so long as I'm not dividing by zero, and I know that dh dt is not zero because h is not constant. So I don't know what the rate is, but I know the rate is not zero, so I can divide. And so this will cancel with this, and this will cancel with this. And I'm left with negative 3 fourths x equals negative h. And then I'm going to make them both positive because I can. Okay. Okay, I may be getting somewhere. Now the next thing that I know, uh, let's see if I have a different color. I know that this is true. Right? So I'm going to rearrange this. I know that h squared equals 40 squared minus x squared. Right? And if I take the square root, I get that h equals the square root of 1600 minus x squared. Right? That has to be true. Um, I, I don't know if it helps me any yet, but that has to be true. Okay. So let's see if that takes us anywhere. Okay. So, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to say that, uh, so I'm going I'm to plug that in there. Uh, only I'm going to write it up here because yeah, I'm running out of room. Okay, so we're going to have that 3 fourths x equals the square root of 1600 minus x squared. Okay. And then uh, we're going to square both sides because uh, square roots scare me. And incidentally, I, I could have made this uh, plus or minus, but we don't usually have negative, we don't usually have ladders that are negatives and, and buildings that are negative. You get the idea. So we kept only the positive side. Okay. And then, so now I'm going to get 9 sixteenths x squared equals 1600 minus x squared. Uh, you can see the, the good old-fashioned family fun in this now. And then uh, we're going to add x squared. You can see why this is, you know, happily a calculator problem, clearly. Uh, so now we're going to get uh, 25 sixteenths x squared equals 1600. Uh, and then x squared is going to be uh, 1600 and then uh, times 16 25 right and then we're going to take a square root I'm not going to multiply that out because I know all of these are square rootable and that's going to make me happy uh, so moving up here I've got that x equals um, 40 times 4 fifths and then uh, actually this isn't so bad as a, as a non-calculator uh, so then 5 goes into 40 eight times and I'm gonna get 32 um, yeah E <laughs> so uh, lots of substituting and plugging in and weird fractions 
But uh, there you go. So, yeah. On to the next one. Okay. The position of a particle moving along a straight line at any time t is given by s of t equals 2t cubed minus 4t squared plus 2t minus 1. The least velocity during the time interval from 0 to 2 is. Okay. Notice they didn't actually use the calculus word for this, but when they say least velocity, what they mean by least velocity here is absolute minimum. Okay? So least, meaning minimum, and anytime they don't say relative or local in front of it, they mean absolute. Okay? So keeping that in mind. All right. So this is the position, so we find velocity. Uh, and the velocity here would be 6t squared minus 8t plus 2. Okay. But then they didn't say to find the least position. They said to find the least velocity, the absolute minimum of the velocity. So now what I want you to do is pretend that this part never existed find the absolute minimum of velocity. How do I find the absolute minimum of, of velocity? I take the derivative of velocity and set that equal to zero. I find that on these problems, people have a tendency to go, well, I've already taken a derivative, so I should set that equal to zero. But remember, they're asking you to find the absolute minimum of the velocity. Just because you had to take a derivative to find the velocity doesn't mean that that's what you set equal to zero. Okay? All right, here we go. So V prime is 12t minus 8. Alright, so I'm going to factor out a 4, and that's going to give me 3t minus 2. So t equals 2 thirds is your critical point. Right? But this is absolute minimum, so we're going to look at v of 0, v of 2 thirds, and v of 2 to find our absolute minimum. All right, so the velocity at zero, well, zero minus zero plus two, looks like zero. Velocity at two thirds. I'm gonna let you guys plug that into your calculators. Uh, when I did this, I got negative two thirds. And V of two, two squared is four times six, I got 24 minus 16 plus 2, I get more than negative 2 thirds. So this is your absolute minimum. Be very careful because a lot of times people get 2 thirds and then they look at this and go, wait a minute, 2 thirds isn't one of my answers. Or even worse, 2 thirds is one of the answers. They circle that and they think they're done because they assumed that what the question was asking was where is the, the position, or where, sorry, <laughs> at what time is the velocity smallest? But that wasn't the question. The question was where is the least velocity? They want v of t, they don't want t. So the answer here is the negative two-thirds. Okay, so be very, very careful because they trip people up with that all the time. Okay. Last question here. The acceleration of a particle moving on a line is a of t equals t to the negative one half plus three t to the one half. Starting from rest, the distance traveled by the particle from t equals zero to t equals three point six one is approximately. Okay. So we have a, and we want distance. So we have to. We have to first, starting with A, we have to go back, we have to go down to velocity, right? Starting with acceleration, we go to velocity, and from velocity, we go to distance. Okay. So, here we go. We know that to get from acceleration to velocity, we have to take an integral, right? It's tempting to think that you would go from 0 to 3.61. The problem is if we do that, we're going to get a number. And we don't want a number, we want a function. 
So we're going to do this without bounds. Uh, sorry, I have this written completely, totally, and utterly backwards. Okay, let's try that again. V of t equals the integral of a of t dt. So let's try that. Okay, and we're going to get um, the integral of t to the negative 1 half plus 3t to the 1 half dt. All right. And t to the negative 1 half, we add 1, right? So we get t to the positive 1 half, divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2, plus 3 times t to the 1 half plus 1 is uh, 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. These guys cancel. Plus c. Well, now this is a problem. We have a plus c. How do we get rid of plus c? Usually, they give us one of those nice initial conditions, right? They tell us, well, the velocity at 3 is 7, and we plug that in. Well, they actually gave us an initial condition. They just disguised it. They said starting from rest. If, there were, if we're starting from rest, then when we're starting, t equals 0, we are at rest. And if we're at rest, we're not moving. If we're not moving, velocity equals 0. So they gave us an initial condition. They just tried to trick us with it. Okay, so 0 equals plug in t equals 0. I've got 0 plus t equals 0, 0 plus c. Aw, oh, that was so sweet. So c equals 0. All right. Now we can take the next part. The distance traveled by the particle, we know how to find that. So we're going to say that the distance And this is where, right, this is total distance, not displacement, is going to be the integral from 0 to 3.61. Not sure why they picked that number, but whatever. And remember, it's distance, total distance, so we're going to take the absolute value, and we're going to plug in our nice new function, 2t to the 1 half plus 2t to the 3 halves dt. And we're going to plug that into our handy dandy calculators. And I just checked and I did plug in the correct thing this time. So I'm going to trust you guys can do that. Is 28.954, which looks like E. All right. So best of luck to you guys. And I will see you guys hopefully on Thursday. If you have any questions, you can post them in Edmodo. Oopsie.